hey thank you appreciate that do me a favor i'm not at home so i don't have music tonight i hate it i miss my music <laughs> um start liking the video sharing the video um really had i hate i don't have music to play tonight of course you already know the drill i see you shannon thank you let me know what city and state you're from i'm exhausted i won't lie to you it's been a very tiring week uh, but a good one um so we're gonna get through this tonight it's gonna be cool city and state drop it in the comments say what's up in the comments hit that like button hit that share button let's get ready to have a good conversation tonight um let's get ready to have a good conversation tonight this is gonna be a good conversation uh, as we always do on thursdays and um i want you to let me know where you're at north carolina indiana atl i'm in atlanta as well that's where i am in atlanta right now i've um, been here this is my second day here for business new orleans hope to see you all soon um let me know where you're where you are city and state let me know alabama atlanta michigan good very good share the live cleveland jersey i see all of you dc that's one of my favorite cities um hoping to do launch uh, book number four launch in dc hope you all will Buy a ticket and come. It's going to be on the weekend. Not this weekend, but a weekend. Like the video, share the video. Good evening to all of you. Um, come on in. I want to start here in a couple of minutes. Um, try my best not to be as long as I normally am. But this is going, going to be fun. What is this? Oh, this is going to be fun. Cali. A lot of new clients from California. A lot of new clients from California, um, and I'm uh, really grateful for that. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Memphis, what's up? Arkansas, thank you. Uh, let me know where you're, you're coming from, where you're tuned in from, and um, we're going to get ready to get going here in a second. <clears throat> Again, I am sorry. I apologize. I do not have music tonight. I miss my music, and um, but I'm not home, obviously. And uh, definitely uh, miss having my music in the background. But uh, glad you are here. And glad you all are chiming in. And um, again, hit that like button, tap the screen, share the live, tag somebody, tell them to tune in. Tonight we're talking about three things you need to do before you date or marry. All right, the three things you need to do, three things, good, perfect timing, right? Talking about three things you need to do before you date or before you marry. Uh, this is so important. Uh, it's uh, wedding season, it's getting hot outside, people are getting itchy. And um, <laughs> I wanna give you three things you need to do before you date or marry. So start sharing this video now. We need another week of 300 shares. We had 300 shares last week. Um, and a lot of viewers last week, almost 500 solid viewers last week. And so keep liking the video, sharing the video. If you would, for me, that would, I would really greatly appreciate it. And, um, it's an honor Margie to do the live. I'm excited to do this every Thursday. And, uh, this is going to be a lot of fun and, um, I'm excited to talk to you tonight. Uh, and got a couple of announcements as well. So this is going to be fun. But like the video, share the video. Again, City State, drop it in. I need to see more of those of you that are tuning in. Um, I need to see more cities and states uh, in the comments. Let me know where you're from, where you're tuning in from. And uh, this is going to be a lot of fun tonight. Detroit did a talk show based out of Detroit Tuesday. A lot of fun. Gainesville, Georgia. I'm in Atlanta. Very good. Raleigh, of course. Atlanta again. Richmond, South Africa. Thank you so much, Belinda. Um, Raleigh, Charlotte, hometown, Arkansas, Houston, of course. Houston is always here. Trinidad and Tobago, I see. Very good. Dallas, Macon, thank you. New York, Curacao, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, very good. Philadelphia, Louisville, Tennessee, Hagerstown, Uganda. A lot of clients, new clients from Uganda as well. This is very, um, really expansive. 
and certainly hope this content is helping you. Let's get those viewers up. Let's get those viewers up to 500 tonight. Y'all keep liking and sharing the video. Again, I'm going to give you three things you need to do before you start dating and, and or before you get married. And this is going to be very practical, um, very basic, but very powerful as well. And um, you're going to enjoy this. And again, I want you uh, to make sure you like the video, share the video, uh, tag some people that need to see this tonight. Let's get those shares up. We need to get those shares way up tonight. Um, if everybody that's tuned in would just simply hit that share button, you would go a long ways in helping us uh, spread this message uh, tonight and empower uh, some people. This is your weekly free counseling and coaching um, that we offer every week on Thursdays and uh, looking to expand this a little bit more into YouTube here in the, the coming weeks. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Yes, I will talk a little bit about narcissism um, and uh, I won't do that tonight, uh, but narcissism, that topic is on my list. I've got a list. I've got enough content here to run us easily, probably through the end of next year. <laughs> We've got that much content. So I'm going to be expanding this uh, to some podcast stuff, um, expanding this to some stuff as it relates to YouTube um, and um going to uh, switch the format up a little bit when we go over to YouTube uh, to allow some of you to come on the screen and ask your questions live. This is going to be fun. And uh, that's a format that really works well for me. I enjoy doing it and really want to build a community of people that can empower other people. So this is going to be a lot of fun and um, it's going to be great. I love you too. Our Jizzle. Appreciate you, bro. Really do. It uh, means a lot to me. And um and uh, very good. Uh, the best part, praying for you. A lot of people that are heading to divorce. Divorce is not fun. Um, it is not a fun experience, especially if you have children involved. Um, and uh, certainly my heart and prayers go out to you um, because that's not a fun experience. Um, so certainly I hope this tonight is really a help to those of you that are looking to date, looking to marry. Um, and uh, I think this is going to be some good content on tonight. All right. Like the video, share the video. Let's get into it really quickly. Um, let, let me start off by, as I always do, um, let me talk about, uh, first of all, thanking all of you for sharing the content um, and for um, continuing to get the word out about this channel. It's really uh, because of your shares and likes, really, um, that uh, so many opportunities have been created. Um, I'm pleased to say that I'm, I'm still working and, and hope, hoping to put the final touches on my podcast um, that will be on YouTube and probably Apple um, iTunes and um, excited about that because um, making that transition to YouTube and Apple is going to be necessary to really broaden uh, the pipe of content that we want to give out to uh, people that really need this information. You know, some of the most powerful feedback that I receive is doc. This is my free, you, your content gives us free weekly um, coaching. <laughs> and um, it's so funny. I never intended this information to do that. Um, I simply you know, attempted to share a lot of the stories from clients and, and a lot of my personal stories to empower as many people as I can. And so I'm really grateful for how you continue to share the channel, share the content, and it really means a lot to me. Um, book number four, I am putting the, the finishing touches on it. It's my hope that that launch can happen perhaps by the end of July, no later than the beginning of August. Um, I want to try to get that in before the summer is over. Um, and so um, that's my hope um, for book number four. And right now the goal is to either launch that book release party in either D.C. or Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, and so if I do it, it will be on a Saturday. I hope many of you will just catch a flight and come. Um, it's my plan to have a whole program, not just book launch, but also have a whole program. And um, yes, it's for older people, too. It's for everybody um, to also have a program at that book launch um, that involves um, almost like a live show. It's going to be a lot of fun. And so uh, I certainly hope um you all will participate in, again, Charlotte, D.C., two metro areas that are really um, kind of easy to access from most, most major cities. A lot of folks um, on from all kinds of places across the country. And so we hope you'll participate. And I'll have some information on that really soon. 
All right, so that's book number four, hopefully around August. Um, also, uh, let me say this, um, as a woman that cur curse a lot, I love the fact that you give advice without it. I try to. Yes, I love DC and Aggie Pride, of course. Uh, absolutely true to K. Um, let me also say this. Um, so my counseling and coaching <laughs> is backed up, way backed up. Uh, if you have sent me an inbox, a DM about um, a question or about getting some coaching, um, I am not ignoring your message. I attempt to reply to every message I receive. Um, um, with over 100,000 followers now, that happened really fast. Um, it is difficult sometimes <laughs> to reply to everybody, honestly, within days. Sometimes at this point, it's taking almost a week or so to just turn around messages. And I believe in trying to engage with you. Um, and um, I appreciate that, Jay Byrne 13. It's always good to get feedback from um guys and men. I really appreciate that a lot, my brother. Um, I, I try to respond to every message that comes to me. Uh, as you all would imagine, it's really getting difficult to do that. Uh, I do need an assistant really bad, <laughs> for real, really bad. And um, uh, I'm looking into that, to be honest with you, and just playing with some things in my mind. Nevertheless, um, um, I want to say thank you for your messages. It is my goal um, over the next couple of days to try to respond to all of the messages in my DMs and on both TikTok as well as Instagram. Um, and um, I will just say, if you send a message about coaching, um, you um, right now my schedule is backed up through um, through June into July, and I've even have appointments for August right now. Um, but I have good news. Uh, I want um, the moderators, if you're on, do me a favor. Go ahead and drop the link from my bio in the comments. Um, I'm pleased to announce um, the group work sessions for the month of June. Group work is a group coaching session that I created in May that was incredibly, insanely good. Uh, we had two sessions in May. The second session was three and a half hours. There were 27 people that RSVP for that session. Um, I had about 19 of them show up. Um, and of the 19, probably 15 of them had questions where they came on the screen and asked their questions. And that turned out to be a three and a half hour session. And that was way too long. Uh, many of the folks that tuned in said, Doc, um, I never been a part of anything like this. If you if you know anybody who's done Alcoholic Anonymous or any other type of group coaching, counseling types of sessions, then they would understand the power of community and having other people that are tuned in that encourage you. Um, you're on the screen with me. You tell me your problem and we walk through it and work through it together with other people that are tuned in and watching. And uh, man, there were people on that call crying. Uh, it was a powerful, 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 powerful um, thing this past uh, Saturday, three and a half hours. And the feedback that I received from participants is one, it's too long uh, because it's too many people, uh, reduce the people and up the price. And I've got to do that. <laughs> so the sessions are out right now. Here's the thing, June the 10th, June 24th, 12 slots only. That's all I can do. I can only do 12 slots because 12 slots allows me to keep it within two hours and that averages about eight to 10 minutes per conversation. Some conversations run longer. Some might be shorter because what I've discovered through group work is that you work with two or three people and you end up answering everybody's questions because people have similar challenges. Um, and so I wanna challenge you. Um, the moderators are putting um, the link in um, the comment section. Go to my page now. I just made it live. There are 12 sessions. 12 slots available on June the 10th, 12 slots available on June the 24th. Between announcing it tonight, putting it on my stories tomorrow, my goal is to go ahead and fill the slots in the next 24 to 48 hours. And um, in that way, it keeps the groups small and it ensures that we can serve as many people as we can uh, and do justice by doing it in a timely way. So again, that's June the 10th, June the 24th, group work, um, links in the bio, Moderators will put it up again. Just click on the link. Go ahead and RSVP tonight. It's a powerful two hour session and you're getting a two hour um, session with me, group session with me um, that probably is about a fourth of the cost. Um, and so 
I'm excited. I'm looking forward to working with you. And uh, we're getting ready to get into the three things. But I want to say again, thank you for all of your support. Sign up for group work as um, I know it's going to be a help to you. And um, again, there it is. I see the link pinned. Thank you so much. Uh, the link is pinned there. Go ahead and click on the link RSVP right now. Um, and that's going to be of help to you. Now, you all know the rules uh, for Thursday night. Um, when we talk about things, I always encourage you to type church in the comments with as many R's as you want to. Uh, if I say anything that makes sense to you, and this is going to be powerful. Let's talk about this. I want you to put in the comments now, three things to do before you date or get married. All right. Put that in the comments now. You're going to be the smartest person at the water cooler tomorrow. Three things to do before you date or get married. I want you to put that in the comments now. That's the topic. Go ahead and keep hitting that share button. Let's get those shares up to about 500. Let's get those viewers up to about 500 tonight as well. And uh, this is going to be good. Somebody said background check. Uh, this is going to be good. And this is going to be so very practical. But I'm telling you, as practical as this may seem to many of you, what I'm discovering in this work is that so many people aren't doing the basic things. And I knew this um, over the lifetime of the work, the time that I've been doing this. Um, these are very simple things if we think about it. But so many people aren't doing the little things. And um, people are just so interested in having someone that they are bypassing the necessary things you need to do in order to be prepared to have someone. And um, this is going to be important. And um, you're going to reap the benefits of your free coaching session tonight. And uh, of course, um, the moderators will drop my cash app. Feel free uh, to donate to the show uh, as your donations uh, certainly support what we do. All right. So let's talk about this. Number one, first thing that you want to do before you date or get married is this. All right, record it. Get to know yourself in a deep way. I'm going to explain this. Get to know yourself in a deep way. Okay, get to know yourself in a deep way. The first thing you need to do before you start dating, before you get married, is you need to get to know yourself in a deep way. Right? What do I mean by deep way? I mean... Just as I'm looking in this mirror in this hotel, you need to create some intentional time where you can literally look yourself in the mirror and be truthful with you about you. You know what I'm discovering? So many people are allergic to honesty. People are allergic to honesty. People don't want to grow and develop. They don't want to hear what's true. Uh, they don't want to hear what's tough. Um, they don't want to hear what's honest. And most of the time, that's because people really don't want to grow the way they say they want to. Sometimes growth requires some difficult conversations. I will tell all of you that have never worked with me. You can ask any of my clients and they will tell you um, that while we have a fun time together, um, helping them grow and develop into everything they want to be. Our conversations are very challenging. Uh, my job, much like a good parent, is to be cool with you, but to be honest with you. And before you decide to connect with anybody, you need to really get to know you. Y'all, you don't get in a marriage or a relationship and then try to figure you out. That is the, epit that is the epitome of putting the cart before the horse. And so many people do that. They get connected to people and then discover, oh, I want to get to know myself. Problem is, you have bought another whole person and people, if you have children, into this relationship, into this marriage, and you've literally put the relationship before your own development. And so when the relationship falls apart, listen to this, when the relationship falls apart, you lose your identity because it was never established in the first place. This is why people real over breakups. This is why people reel for extended period of time, periods of time. Hurt is part of it. Disappointment is part of it. But if you go into a relationship or a connection or a marriage and you never knew you, when that marriage falls apart, you fall apart with it because you never had a an identity going into it. Right? You were never honest with you about the work that was necessary before you went into it. And so stop bringing other people into your life without taking a moment to first understand you, without, without taking a moment to first get to know you to the depths necessary um, so that you have formed your identity. 
And I'm going to talk a little bit about this um, in just a second, but I'll say this, this whole idea of connecting with other people and, um, and we connect with people um, for completion is, is false. You don't connect with people, especially in the context of marriage, for them to complete you. People can't complete you. And don't hit me, you religious say folks, with two, two becoming one. I don't want to hear that. Um, because while I know what the Bible says, understand two becoming one does not mean people complete you. It means people complement you. And there's a big difference between somebody completing you and somebody complimenting you. And so many people are trying to attach to people with the idea of them completing them instead of connecting with people so that they can compliment you. A compliment is a connection that makes you better. A completion is something you got to have in order to be whole. And the reality of the matter is, if you got to have somebody to complete you, that implies that you're incomplete. Listen to what I said. That's a bar. I'm going to give that to you again slow. If somebody has to be with you to complete you, that implies you are incomplete. And if you are incomplete, you are not prepared to be with anybody. And the reason why the divorce rate, the breakup rate is at an all time high is because incomplete people connect with incomplete people thinking that incomplete people are going to build another income or an incomplete person is going to build another another incomplete person. And it does not work that way. It doesn't. It doesn't. Y'all, if you are incomplete, stop trying to connect to folks in relationships. Stop trying to get married right now. You can have a desire to get married. I know I rub a lot of feathers when I tell people don't date and to chill out, take some time off and get your, your gas tank up to F before you do it. And people really get annoyed by that. But the problem is when you're not on F, you're really incomplete. Well, Doc, I got three fourths tank of gas. Is that enough? Sure it is. But you have limited how far you can drive the car. Go back and watch the video. You've limited how far you can drive the car. The best way you can show up in a relationship is with the tank on F. Because when you're on F and they're on F, you got two full tanks that are not completing one another, but are complementing one another. I'm in a season of my life, whether it's friendships or relationships, I don't want nobody to complete me. I don't need nobody to complete me. I want people that complement me, that can be added to where I am in the work that I've done to make my life next level. I don't need nobody to complete me. And when you don't need anybody to complete you, it's impossible to show up in spaces needy. It's impossible to show up in spaces codependent. Many people are needy today, not because they're bad people, but because they're incomplete people. And because you are incomplete, you show up needy because you need companionship. You need a connection. And I get it. Don't hit me with Maslow. I understand Abraham Maslow. I love his work. Abraham Maslow does suggest that one of our highest um, needs uh, as, a, as a human being is the need for companionship. I get that. That's totally true. But understand, don't misunderstand the context of what I'm sharing with you. At the end of the day, what's higher than all of that is this emotional level called enlightenment. When you are fully enlightened and whole, you don't need anybody but you. And again, I'm going to say this. I said it earlier this week. I know people didn't like it. There's always one or two out of thousands that have something you know negative to say. There were a handful of people that said, hey, doc, I don't I don't agree. If I'm not full, I can just go out here and and, and just date and, and just hope. Hopefully I can find somebody to connect with somebody. And I put my little bit of gas with their gas and we can ride. You sure can. You can do a lot. You can do what you want to do. But the reality of the matter is you're going to drive your relationships further if both of you show up in this space as full as you can possibly be. And not only that, this is important. Not only do you need to show up in the spaces as full as you can possibly be, you need to understand that some people are not meant to be with people. I don't expect a lot of churches here, but listen, some people, some of us may not end up with somebody. That's the harsh reality. And I know, you know, y'all saying, well, doc, I hope that ain't me. I'm not saying it is or it's not. I don't know. 
But the fact of the matter is some people will not end up getting married. Some people will not end up having children. Some people will not, if you've been married before, end up having um, another chance at marriage. Who knows? And so if that's the case, you've got to be so satisfied with you that if nobody ever comes along, if you die tomorrow, you would be all right. Y'all, it has taken me a while to get here, but I can honestly say that if I didn't make it past tomorrow, y'all could fly into my funeral and know that I'm all right. I'm absolutely okay. That's called operating in a place of heal, being healed and whole. All right, and we're going to talk, of course, a little bit about this tonight. You already know there's not many broadcasts that I go on where I don't talk about uh, lives, where I don't talk about being healed and whole. All right. So we're still on number one. Get to know yourself in a deep way. What are some ways we can do it? Obviously, self, self work, which means you want to commit to knowing every side of you. I need you to commit before you try to connect with anybody else. I need you to take the time to commit to knowing every side of you, the good side, the bad side. The indifferent side, you need to know all of that stuff. The Gemini side, the Taurus side, whatever you, whatever side you got going on, you need to commit to knowing every side of you. It's so important because it's going to be difficult for you to engage another person and who they are if you're not really fully confident and complete with understanding who you are, right? So self-work helps, helps, obviously. Therapy helps. Coaching helps, um, obviously. But all of this stuff requires honesty. Let me make this real clear. If you do not like hearing feedback, you don't need a mate. Listen to me. If you don't like feedback, you don't need a mate. If you don't like for people to tell you stuff you don't like, if you don't like for people to be honest with you about you, you don't need them. You need to stay single. And I'm good with that, too. Be single. Nothing wrong with being single. Be single. Don't waste anybody else's time and don't waste your time. If you don't want people to be honest with you, and that's the problem. We want a fairy tale. We don't want a relationship, right? We want something that looks nice on Instagram, but we don't really want a relationship. And I like that, Belinda, because she's Belinda just commented. I just happened to look down and see the comment that says you got to have a teachable spirit. That's important. You got to have a teachable spirit. You got to be teachable. You got to be trainable. You got to be approachable. You do. And I want to put this out here. Ladies, you have to be willing to be teachable um, to the men that you're going to be connected to. And men, hear me. You got to be willing to be teachable as well. Um, I was telling the client earlier today, um, I'm always excited when I add new men. I've had several men be added here lately over the last couple of weeks. And it's very impressive to me because men, what I've discovered is that men don't really want to do this work. They don't want to work on themselves. A lot of men don't want to hear correction from anybody. And the reality of the matter is, um, if you want to lead a family or lead children or lead whatever, you have to be correctable. If that's a word, you have to be able to be corrected. And so men, I'm especially talking to you. Um, the best way to get your relationship in alignment, to get your marriage in alignment is to be willing to be corrected. Um, to be willing to be coached, to be willing to be empowered, um, because that's going to require you to take time to honestly get to know and understand yourself. It's so important. OK. And then, ladies, if you get a man that is healed, that is whole, I'm going to say this. I ain't going to like it. I don't expect no churches. I don't expect no donations. Uh, moderators put up my cash app just in case somebody get inspired. They ain't going to like what I'm saying. But ladies, listen to me. If you would have healed in a whole man, you got to learn how to be quiet. I know you got to learn how to be quiet. If you would have healed in a whole man, you got to learn how to be quiet. You do. You got to tone some of that masculine energy down. Uh, I told the client earlier today, some of you have conflicts in relationships with people and connections with people because you acting more like a man than he is. Seriously. And you can't have double masculine energy and expect it to work. Ying doesn't match with Ying and Yang doesn't match with Yang. It, it just ain't going to work. Can't have two men. If, you know, ladies, you've been in your masculine and men and you're trying to be in your masculine, it's not going to work. The same thing applies with feminine energy. 
fellas, some of you are acting more feminine than these women that you you dating and you connected to and married to. It's the truth. Let me give you a real good example. Fellas, if your lady, if your lady that you're dating or married to offends you, you don't have a right to go weeks without speaking to her. That's feminine energy. I'm going to probably have to do another live real soon on feminine and masculine energy. That's feminine energy. Fellas, if she offends you and you take weeks to talk to her again, I don't care what it is. You take weeks to talk to her you know, a day. That's different, especially if she really upset you a day, whatever weeks. You go weeks and you do not say a word to her and ghost her for weeks because she offended you. That's feminine energy. Let me tell you what feminine energy does. Ladies, you may not say church here, but it's the truth. Ladies, when you get offended, what do you do? You shut down. You get quiet. You don't want to talk. You don't want to be touched. You don't want uh, to be talked to. You don't want to be none of that stuff. So, let, fellas, when you start acting like that, then all of a sudden we got two women in the house. We got two women in the house. She's a woman and you acting like one. And it's not going to work. So you have to tone that down. Now, let me say this and be really clear. All of us have masculine and feminine energy. All of us. Every man, every woman has masculine and feminine energy. And the extent to which side you lean on um, is important as it relates to the dynamics in your relationship. Yin yang, masculine, feminine. Men are from Mars, women are from Venus. This is so important. If both of you are trending in the same energy, two feminine energies, two masculine energies, there's not going to be some consistent cohesion. There's not. There might be some excitement, especially when it comes to two masculine energies, where the man is operating in the masculine, the woman is attempting to operate in the masculine pre predominantly. That's when you tend to end up with relationship dynamics that are very toxic, right? A lot of fighting, a lot of arguing, a lot of hot, cold behavior. When things are really good, they're really good. When they're really bad, they're really bad. That kind of stuff, you know, kind of Ike and Tina Turner, rest in, in peace, Tina Turner, kind of Ike and Tina Turner kind of dynamics, right? Where things are really hot and when they're hot, they're hot, you know, but when they're cold, they're really bad, right? You cannot do that. It requires balance, okay? It requires balance. And so you've got to be certain that you check that. And this all can be done through coaching, through coaching. Now, let me say this, and I forgot to announce it. This is the other announcement. Let me make a note here so I don't forget because I almost forgot. Ladies, here is my gift to your boyfriends and your husbands. On group work, last the last session of group work, somebody had a great idea. Uh, Father's Day. Somebody had a great idea and said, Doc, um, why don't you offer a Father's Day sale for men that want to book a group uh, or a coaching session with you? I thought that was a great idea. Uh, and so um, tomorrow I will have the link up um, where uh, men can book a coaching session with me uh, at a discounted rate and um, encourage your men friends. Because I know y'all got them. All y'all ain't single. You might be single and title, but y'all, some of y'all dating, seeing folks. Some of y'all kill me telling me you ain't seeing nobody. And I just, anyway, it's a different conversation, different day. Y'all seeing folks. But go ahead and invite your men, folks, your husbands, whatever. I'm going to have that link out tomorrow and go ahead and encourage them to do some coaching. I would love to coach them. All right. We'll do that sale. But, but hear me, this is going to require honesty. If you want to grow, and get to know yourself in a deep way, it requires self-awareness. One of the things that people lack more than almost anything else in their lives is self-awareness, right? It's this idea of getting, I am tired, but I'm okay. It's this idea of getting on an elevator on your phone and talking loud on a crowded elevator, right? It's no self-awareness. And self-work helps to improve that, all right? So that's number one. Get to know yourself in a deep way. Here's number two. This is where it's going to get fun. Number two, second thing you want to do before you date or get married is this. Empower yourself to wholeness. Y'all like this video, share the video. Come on, hurry. Share the video, like the video. Empower yourself to hold wholeness. The second thing you want to do before you start dating, before you get married, you want to empower yourself to wholeness. All right. What do I mean on that by that? 
I mean, you want to focus on the five areas of being healed. If you've seen any of my content, you should know this like the back of your hand. All right. You want to work on your emotional mental stability. You want to work on your emotional stability. You want to work on your spiritual stability. You want to work on your physical stability. You want to work on your financial stability. Again, you want to work on your mental stability. What is your mindset? How mentally healthy are you? You want to work on your emotional stability. What is your emotional maturity level? Can you take feedback, criticism? How do you respond when things don't go your way? You want to work on your spiritual stability. It's more than going to a church or to a mosque or whatever you believe in. But it is also about creating opportunities for you to still your heart and mind. Right. This is so important. It's very important that you look for opportunities to still still S-T-I-L-L your heart and mind. I don't care how busy life is. Y'all know my schedule. You've heard it a million times. I get up every morning at 408. Every morning. Monday through Friday, that is. Saturdays, I'll try to sleep to six if I can. Sundays till six or seven. 408 in the morning. First thing I do is pray. Second thing I do is use the restroom. Third thing I do is meditate. Fourth thing I do is work out. Fifth thing I do is uh, make my protein shake. Sixth thing I do is, is journal. Seventh thing I do is make my kids lunch. I wake them up. And the last thing I do is take a cold shower before I start my day. There's no excuse, right? You need some meditation time, all right? You need some prayer time. You need some meditation time. Prayer is, is, is conversation with God or whatever you believe in. Meditation is conversation with yourself. It is slowing your mind down and learning how to focus in the present, not worry about the past, not be concerned about the future. And when you do this consistently every day, it's hard to be shaken. Y'all, I can't remember the last time I've really been pissed. I don't have no wood to knock on and I don't want to knock on one. I don't need none. When you really focus on stealing your mind every day and getting your mind as still as possible, you will get to the place where nothing really rattles you. Nothing shakes you. I know without a doubt that meditation helps you to manage any types of stress that come your way. Many of you are hotheads because you don't take the time to slow life down and be focused in the moment to deal with one thing at a time. Many of you, the cause of your anxiety is really rooted in your inability to slow life down. Life is coming at you fast. Things are coming at you fast. And you have not worked on and practiced the art of just slowing down. Talk to an athlete. They'll tell you. Just to play basketball it was decent. Talk to an athlete and they'll tell you that when you really lock in the present, you get your training down, the game slows down for you. It looks fast to the people that are watching. It might be fast to the other people on the court, but it slows down for you uh, when you really are locked in to what it is that you're doing. Okay, so you got to work on, on that. Um, that's spiritual. Um, so mental, emotional, spiritual, physical. I did a video on this today. I did a video on this today. I did a video on this today, especially you believers. I know some of y'all upset. I don't care. For those of you that go to church, that shout every week, that is not exercise. A praise break ain't no exercise. So I don't care how much you run in church up and down the aisles. That does not count as exercise. That is not a crunch. And it's so crazy to me. You know, I, These are conversations that I have with colleagues. These are conversations that I have with with people that I'm connected to, I'm blessed as a Christian. That's my faith. I'm not offended by anybody who has different faiths. Um, I've got friends who, who are from all spectrums, from Muslim to atheist. Um, as a person that's an, uh, a scholar, um, that's what my network looks like. And I'm proud of it. My friends don't all look the same. They don't all come from the same place. But one of the things that we talk about a lot is this just this idea of how so many people who have a spiritual, say that you're spiritual, you have the discipline to stop all kinds of things, but you don't have the discipline 
to stop doing certain things. Like you might have the discipline to not have sex. You might have the discipline to not drink. You might have the discipline to not smoke. Do you have the discipline to go to the gym? Because guess what? The same discipline that you use to protect your temple is the same discipline you need to use to put down the fried chicken every single day. And it's crazy to me. Listen, it's crazy to me. I can't speak for, um, and I, I see many of my Muslim friends that are, t- uh, the, that are tuning in. Thank you so much. I get so much feedback from the Muslim community. I love it because I have friends that are Muslim. Um, I can't speak for, for the mosque, but let me tell you something about the church. The church is, <laughs> I've never seen so many people, so many overweight. Listen, this is going to sound bad. This is going to sound bad. There's no judgment. I don't trigger anybody, but let me just be brutally honest here. I've never seen, I'm not talking about if you have an underlying condition. Let me be clear here before I before I go here, because this is going to get rough here. I'm not talking about if you have an underlying condition, something you cannot control, something you were born with. I'm not talking about any of that stuff. Something you were born with. I'm not talking about any of that stuff. I'm talking about if you are able-bodied, able to be able to control your weight through diet exercise. I have not seen so many overweight people in church in my life. And the crazy part about this is, they have so much discipline not to drink. I mean, we'll curse you out if you smoke around them. We'll curse you out if, if they see you in a bar having a glass of wine. But do not have the same discipline to put down the chitlins. Doesn't make sense. And it's not adding up. It's not adding up. Now, I see a very powerful question here. Question, how should I feel about losing weight as a condition to be engaged? Uh, That's a loaded question. I believe this, that physical stability is one of the five areas you should be working on. If that request is coming from someone who is physically fit and is whole in all of the other areas, I'm not saying that's a fair request, but I will say that when we think about being unequally yoked, we only think about that from a spiritual standpoint. It's crazy how people read in the Bible, don't be unequally yoked, and they think it's only about what you believe. It ain't in just what you believe. You're unequally yoked if you're connected to somebody who's mentally unstable, and you are. Let me say this slow, because I need to see some churches here, and somebody need to put my cash up up, because I'm giving y'all a really good free game. You are unequally yoked if you are mentally stable and with somebody who's not mentally stable. You're unequally yoked if you are emotionally mature and your mate is emotionally immature. You are unequally yoked if you have a spiritual foundation and your mate does not have a spiritual foundation. You are unequally yoked if you are physically fit and your mate who does not have an underlying condition they can't control is not physically fit. You're unequally yoked if you are financially stable and you connected to somebody who's not. And see, we don't talk about that. We just say unequally yoked is just about the spirit. That's what we say. I'm sorry. Let me make this clear for those folks that are not and familiar with that that biblical term, unequally yoked. Y-O-L-K-E-D. It's the idea that two people that are together, that come together, are equal in all things. All right. That's just a layman's example of that. All right. Thank you for that question. So being unequally yoked is more than just the spirit. It's more than the spirit. Where is your emotional intelligence? Where is your relational stability? Yeah, you shout at church. You fall out. You do all of that stuff. But it doesn't make sense that you got discipline spiritually but you have no physical discipline. It makes no sense to me. And I don't care. There ain't a believer, ain't a bishop, ain't nobody nowhere that can convince me otherwise. In fact, the Bible that I read said, I wish that you would prosper and be in good health. Hear me, hear me. Even as your soul prospers, which means just as good as your soul is doing well, your body ought to be doing well too. And I'm here to tell you, if you got your spirit in check, but your health all over the place, your eating habits bad, and you don't have the same discipline physically for your physical that you have as your spiritual, you unequally yoked. You're not whole. 
You might be saved, you're not whole. You might be saved, but you ain't whole. And this is why when they announce the divorce rates, they don't ignore church people. They don't ignore you if you go to a mosque. They don't ignore you if you're Muslim. They don't ignore you if you're an atheist. That divorce rate go for everybody. You know why? Because most people, most people are only whole in one or two of those five areas. They're not whole in all five. Which means you can be in church and you can claim to know the Lord and love the Lord or love Allah or whoever you love. But if you got spiritual stability, but you do not know how to communicate through an argument, you're going to end up in divorce court. You got all of this spiritual growth, but hear what I'm saying. You got all of this spiritual growth, but you have no emotional stability. So when things get bad and rough and tough, you don't have the emotional maturity to calm down and have a conversation, but you claim to have God. You, you claim to have God. It doesn't make sense. And this is why the divorce rate doesn't skip over the church. Y'all shouting, but you don't have balance in other areas of your life. So again, those five areas, you're going to hear this like a broken record. It's going to be in my fourth book as well. I believe in this stuff. I better, I got to get this. It's, it's already patented before anybody tries to steal it. Um, but I'm serious. Mental stability, emotional stability, spiritual stability, physical stability, financial stability. You got to have those things. You have to have those things. And I'm here to tell y'all, this is going to sound really bad to you religious folks, but hear me. Your God is not enough. Whatever God you serve, I believe in Jesus Christ, but hear me. Jesus is not enough if all I have is him, but I have no emotional stability. No emotional maturity, no mental stability. My finances are all over the place. I couldn't stand going to church with a bunch of broke people who had good jobs, but didn't have the discipline to be able to regulate their money. So you mean tell me you got the discipline to not drink and smoke, but you don't have the discipline to pay your bills? Y'all don't like this. I don't see no churches. Ain't nobody hit my cash app tonight. I'm about to shut down the live. Maybe I'm not saying anything right. <laughs> it's the same discipline. The same discipline you exercise in one area is good for all areas. So I'm not saying you have to be perfect. Let me give you my routine. This is important. And I want to answer your question, Red, that says, so if we do these things, will we meet somebody? I'm going to get to that in a second. But my routine is simple. Monday through Friday, I go hard. Um, I might cheat occasionally. My kids are nine and 10. They love snacks. They might pull me in and be like, Daddy, if I get them Chick-fil-A, please, Daddy, eat some chicken nuggets or something. I'll do that because community with them is important. Um, but they'll tell you, I eat salads during the week, right? I really try to um, stick to salads and proteins, low carb diet, um, of course, working out. That's Monday through Friday. And I'll do some workouts on some Saturdays. Half a day Saturday and all day Sunday, I eat what I want to eat. I eat what I want to eat. So Monday through Friday, it's, it's pretty strict and solid. Half a day Saturday, second half of the day Saturday, and the rest of the day on all day on Sunday, I eat what I want to eat. It gives me balance. It's a reward for me. And you should do the same. I'm not saying that you can't have some days where you enjoy something, but come on. It shouldn't be the other way around. Yes, I cook when I have time. Barely have time. I don't have to, I need to get a maid or something. <laughs> I'm serious. It's crazy around here. Uh, just busy. But listen to me. You got to have some balance. And if you have the ability to do all seven days, go do it. But I'm at least do Monday through Friday. Try this. Do at least Monday through Friday. Right? If you do at least Monday through Friday and you fast the first half of Saturday and then the rest of Saturday and all day Sunday, enjoy what you like. You will see a tremendous difference. All right. Somebody wants the cash app, put it up there because I'm, I'm teaching better than y'all are, are blessing me tonight. All right. OK, so again, it's balanced. But y'all, you have to work on those things. You have to work on those things. Overweight believer is an oxymoron to me unless you have an underlying medical condition. It doesn't make sense. I'm sorry. Y'all can say what you want to say. Overweight believer, overweight and spiritual makes zero sense to me. It'll never make sense. Again, unless you have an underlying condition. 
you have to find the discipline to be able to be disciplined in all things. Okay? This is so important because your body is a temple. I like that. I've seen that, Joe Soul. Joe Soul, I hope I said your name right. Appreciate that, brother. You said that a couple of times. Your body is your temple. But listen, we got to make it the temple in all things. In all things, right? We've got to make it the temple in all things. Um, remember this. Here's an easy way you can empower yourself to wholeness. I'm going to give you this and I'll go to the third thing and answer some questions and we'll be done tonight. Here's an easy way you can empower yourself to wholeness. I want you to remember this phrase. Pray to build up your spirit. Exercise to build up your body. Read to build up your mind. I want to give this to you again. Pray or pray and meditate to build up your spirit. Okay. Pray and meditate to build up your spirit. Exercise to build up your body. Read to build up your mind. It's a simple formula that I've given people, hundreds of people. Pray and meditate to build up your spirit. Exercise to build up your body. Read to build up your mind. When you do those things, I'm here to tell you, you're going to be on your way. You're going to be on your way to being as whole and as complete as you possibly can. Okay? Again, don't forget that phrase. Pray and meditate to build up your spirit. Exercise to build up your body. Read to build up your mind. Okay, you do those things, you're going to see some, 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 some great differences. Here's the third and final thing, right? I'm giving you three things you need to do before you date and get married or get married. Number one, again, get to know yourself in a deep way. Number two, empower yourself to wholeness. Here's the third thing. And let me mention this. I see what read what kinds of things you can read things that relate to your religion, whatever religion you practice. That's totally fine. Or this is the Quran, the Bible, whatever. But that should only be a part of it. Um, you should read. You should be a well-rounded reader. Read self-help books that help you, that empower you. Read books that speak to your interest. Um, read books that speak to those five areas of development. So you should have books that relate to mental health. You should, have, you should have books that relate to emotional health. You should have books that relate to spiritual development. You should have a books that relate to um, physical development. I have a lot of books that are related to physical development um, and nutrition and diet and exercise that I read. Um, and um, you should read books that relate to finances, finances and wealth management. That's something that I'm really heavily in right now. If I had to think about the five areas that's an area that I'm trying to build up even more um, because I it really took me a while to really understand the impact and the importance of wealth management and investing and saving and budgeting and things like that. Right. Um, but you want to read books that really touch on all five of those things. All right. Here's the third and final thing that you want to do before you date or get married. Find something you enjoy doing and do it every chance you can. This is going to make a lot of sense. Just write it out. Type it out. Find something you enjoy doing and do it every chance you can. This is going to make a whole lot of sense. Y'all like the video, share the video. We need 60 more shares. Let's get to 200 at least tonight. Find something you enjoy doing and do it every chance you can. I see the question, you mean a hobby? Could be a hobby. It's possible. Um, it may not be, but this really speaks to locating your purpose. I believe this it doesn't always work this way. You may discover your purpose after you meet someone. You may discover your purpose after you marry someone. But let me say to you, the best situation or position to be in is to know your purpose before you connect with someone. It's to try to figure out your purpose before you connect in a relationship or before you get married. Because when you know your purpose and where your purpose lives, your purpose becomes your home base. This is important. Think baseball. Everything starts not on first, second or third. Everything starts at home. So when that relationship gets wobbly or that marriage goes through tough times and difficult times, listen to me. 
you always have home base to come back to. See, what happens is when people connect with others in relationships or dating or marriages and they don't have their own purpose. When they don't have their own purpose and things start going left, they don't have something to come back on. To fall back on. Right. You you've got to know your purpose and you've got to understand the plan and the things that you enjoy doing that you've been called to do. So that your purpose with you becomes a great complement to the person you're connected to. Okay, so that it becomes a complement to the person you're connected to. And when it does, if the relationship goes well, and we hope it does, the marriage goes well, we hope it does. Then there, there's no big deal. But, but if that that relationship or marriage faces some challenges, you've got a purpose to fall back on. And this is why, oh, this is so good. Y'all, I need to see some churches here if you can relate to this. Many of you don't even realize this, but the reason why you lost yourself when the, the breakup came was not because you were clueless or you were a bad person. You lost yourself because your purpose wasn't established. Listen to what I'm saying. When that breakup happened, you lost yourself because your purpose wasn't established before you connected with them. So when the relationship fell apart, you fell apart with it. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many people I try to help get back on their feet after a relationship breakup when they don't even realize that it's as simple as understanding the reason you fell apart so bad is because you were more connected into them than you were what your own purpose was. So you came to them incomplete. When the relationship fell apart, you fell apart with it. So not only did you lose the relationship, here's the big one, you lost you. This is why many of you have been spending months and years trying to find you again after the breakup. Listen, a breakup should not cause you to lose you. If a breakup causes you to lose you, you never had you in the first place. I expected more churches right there. If a breakup causes you to lose you, you never had you in the first place. You didn't. Which means you might have been half, you might have been half full. Go back to my video. Your gas tank might have been all half full. That's cool. But listen, if you run up against another tank that's full, full, and you got a fourth of, of gas in there, you're gonna run out faster than they do. And when you run out and you gotta be dependent or codependent on them, and then the relationship falls apart. You left on empty. And that's why you end up losing the car, i.e. the relationship, and you at the same time. So we have to combat that by showing up as full as we can. And one way we do it is by knowing our purpose. Y'all, listen. I said it earlier. I'll say it again. Relationships and marriages don't complete us. If you're trying to be with somebody to be complete, you're missing the point. You're missing the point. And y'all can miss me in my comments uh, with them comments about, oh, doc, well, you know, that's the purpose of just dating people to just date people. You're not going to find anybody perfect. You're not perfect. I'm not asking anybody to be perfect. I'm asking you to be as whole and complete as you possibly can to work as hard as you can to get that needle of your life up to that F mark. That's what I'm asking you to do. Because if you get that needle as close as you can to that F mark, if things fall apart, it's going to be a whole lot easier for you to recover. If your gas tank is on a fourth of a full, fourth, a fourth of a tank, and it falls apart, you ain't got very far before you fall apart. This is why some of us recover better from breakups, recover better from divorces, recover better from those situations because we went in and our gas tank was a little bit more full. So y'all stop this. Y'all stop leeching on to people and thinking your connection with people is going to fill them up. And some of you are running on fake gas. Some of y'all are running. You got a whole lot of lead in the gas and it ain't good gas. I hear you, Doc. What do you mean by good gas? How can I know I got good gas? Some of you make love decisions based on superficial things. How attractive they are. Ladies, especially sex gets y'all every time. Some of you ladies have struggled to leave people. 
because the sex was so good. That's fake gas. I don't expect no churches. My cash app ought to be going crazy. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Where's Why is my cash app not dinging tonight? Hmm? Absolutely. You, you've literally been more hooked on the physical connection to the people you're with. And the reason I'm picking on you ladies especially is because it tends to happen more to you because you're emotional beings and that's okay, right? In your feminine energy, you are more emotional in your connections, but understand this for real. I'm ready for a new beanie right now. I should have my PO box hooked by red. I remembered you, you said you do this. I should have my PO box ready. Um, I'll have it ready by the next live. I'm ready for my beanies. Um, I love my beanies, they're very comfortable. Yes, you're emotional. And that's okay. God created you. I'm with that. But please understand, because you are emotional beings, you tend to make emotional decisions. And some of you have given men chances that didn't deserve chances, but you gave them chances because they were talented in one area. Most of the time, y'all couldn't even agree. You couldn't hardly have conversations. You argued more than you got along, but that was the one area y'all always got along in. And I'm here to tell you, when you make decisions like that based on solely that area, you're not operating in your purpose. You're not operating in your purpose at all. So be very careful. Fellas, it can happen to you too. Some of these ladies out here. <laughs> some of these ladies out here put, put a mean one on some of y'all too. I know this is tight, but it's the truth. Some, some of these ladies drop some stuff on y'all that y'all ain't never seen before and y'all be gone. Like for real. And I'm here to tell you, fellas especially, nothing can get a man off his purpose like a woman. Oh, this is good. Where are the men at? Men, men, kings and kingdoms have been destroyed by women. Y'all don't like this kind of talk right here, I know. But ladies, listen to me. Kings and king kingdoms have been destroyed by women. Meaning, the decisions men have made related to women. It's the truth. And so real masculine energy has the ability to love a woman and still love his purpose. Because you can love both. You can love her and you can love what you've been called to do. And you can do both at the same time. And if you cannot do both, fellas, at the same time, she's going to tear your kingdom down. I know. And I don't mean she's doing it intentionally. I'm meaning it because you don't have the spiritual and the emotional balance to be able to handle it all. And you've got to be able to have the balance to do it both. Can't tell you. Just read the news. Read the news. How many CEOs lose their jobs off of what? Affairs. Women. I mean, you're making millions of dollars a year and you can't turn down a piece. Fellas, here's free game. I expect some churches here. Ladies, some of y'all ought to be buying my lunch tomorrow for, for what I'm about to say. Fellas, you ready for this? You want to be attractive, attractive for real? Y'all ready? You want to be attractive, attractive for real, fellas? Let me give you some free game if you want it or not. The key to being attractive, attractive, two attractives is to be able to say no. Fellas, let me put you on free game. When the woman that likes you can see that you can say no to other women and you're not easily swayed by being offered a piece. Listen to me, fellas. She'll do whatever you want her to do. Free game. It's free. This is free. The bar is so low in today's times. It's low. Some of you fellas are so off course with your purpose that anybody that throws you a piece, you'll take it. You have no self-control. I like that. I saw somebody write, wrote self-control. You have no self-control. You have no discipline. You do not have the ability to say no. You, don't, you do not have the ability to turn down people. 
you don't have the ability to turn down somebody wanting your number. Just having this conversation recently with someone. I know I'm whole and complete because I can kindly say to someone, no, I'm not interested or I'm seeing somebody. Or, I'm talking to somebody. That That's that's attractive to women who want a good man. Some of you men can't. I mean, you still in that phase of what whoever barks, you respond. And that's real low level. That's low level. That's low level. Y'all, I say this every week. I'm going to say it again tonight. For real, there's levels to heal, being healed and being whole. There's levels to this stuff. And for some of y'all, you just want a man. Some of you men, you just want a woman. Knock yourself out. There's a whole lot of them out here. But some of us aren't on this low level thing. Some of us are in a different zip code when it comes to being healed and whole. Right? We're not playing around here with low hanging fruit. We're not playing around here with folks that love attention and can't say no. We're not doing that. We up here, right? Knowing our value, knowing our worth, having the ability to say, thank you for the interest. I'm flattered, but I'm not interested. Or thank you for the interest, but I'm seeing someone. That's super attractive. And it requires you to show up in spaces whole and complete. And you got to make sure you work on this, fellas. When you can say no, fellas, to the advances of a woman, especially if you're involved with someone or you're just not interested. Sometimes that happens. You're just not interested. But if you can say no and stand on that, oh, the women that are watching really get turned on. They really get turned on. They really get turned on by a man that's hard to impress. They do. They really get turned on by a man that can walk in a room and see a whole bunch of beautiful, attractive women, but only see one. That's because it takes great discipline and self-control. Great discipline and self-control. And I'm telling y'all, fellas, I'm giving you the key to the, to, the, to, the, to the test. I'm giving you the key to the test. If you can show up in spaces like that, that's attractive. Ladies, let me say this to you too while I got your attention. Ladies, this applies to you too. What's also attractive to a very whole man is a woman who appreciates attention and flat and gets flattered by attention from other men and compliments from other men, but she only sees her man. I know, I know, y'all don't like this because some of you like attention. Some of the women clients that I have, I've had to have a very hard conversation about knowing the difference between love and attention. Ladies, there's a big difference between love and attention. Sometimes it feels the same, it looks the same, but it ain't the same. A man can give you attention and not even care about you. And ladies, if you want to show up in spaces where you are absolutely high value as a woman and seen by your man or men as high value, when you locked in on somebody, be locked in on them. Y'all stop entertaining all of this other attention in your inbox and DMs. And if you do and people are interested, kindly tell them, hey, you know, I appreciate it. You know, I'm seeing somebody or I appreciate it. I'm not interested. And do that. And you will see that your value in the eyes of whole men will be spectacular. I'm just telling you what I know. There's a big difference between love and attention. And sometimes, ladies, in this social media space that we're in, for real, many of you get trapped by this attention thing. Like you, you allow likes and hearts to really go to your head or people, you know, clicking on your video or clicking on your photo and then jumping in your inbox. You let that stuff go to your head. But understand to a whole guy, he ain't that impressed. In fact, a lot of whole men don't even like your photos. I'm just giving y'all free game. Yeah, do y'all want my cash up or not? A lot of whole men don't even like your videos or your photos. It don't be, it doesn't mean you're not attractive. It doesn't mean you don't have a lot to offer. It simply means that they're not going to be seen in the same boat as all of the other thirst traps. This free game. Don't mean they ain't seen it. Doesn't mean they're not impressed by how you look. Doesn't mean none of that stuff. But what it does mean is that they just don't want to be in the mix with the low level fruit. There's levels to this. 
levels. There's levels to being whole. There's levels to being healed. Oh, I'm serious. You got to be careful, ladies. So this attention thing goes both ways. And I want to say this finally, and then I'll answer a couple of questions quickly, and then I'm going to go. Let me say this. I like that Candace. Candace McNair nailed it. They're definitely watching and observing. Listen to one whole man tell you this clearly. As a whole man, if I'm interested in you and I'm watching, if I'm interested in you and I have interest in you, you better believe I'm watching. And when you heal and whole, you can feel when something off. This is man and woman. If you're a whole and healed woman, you can feel when something's off. You might not be able to put your finger on it. You might not be able to know specifically what it is, but you can literally feel when something's off. And when you are a whole man, a whole man is absolutely paying attention. He may never like your videos. He may never jump in your inbox DM. He may never like any of your posts. He may he might not even watch your stories. But when he does, he's paying attention because he wants to see how you respond to attention. He wants to see how you respond to dudes being thirsty so he can know that when he turns his back, he ain't got to worry about you turning yours. Man, I quit. Y'all don't want this tonight. <laughs> That's what he wants to see. And fellas, she wants to see the same thing. Because, you know, sometimes social media be a little raggedy out here for guys, too. Guys be just as thirsty for social media attention as as women are sometimes. Guys, she wants to see that you can post a picture and women like it and compliment you or drop in your inbox or whatever. But you don't fall for that foolishness. You you thank people for the compliments, but you can keep it moving. That's attractive to a whole woman, to a real woman. That's attractive. When she knows she can sit you in a room and you're attractive and you're nice looking and you, you're you well put together. Somebody said, especially musicians. <laughs> Don't y'all get me in trouble tonight. As a retired musician, I, I can have I can talk a little bit about that. Um, but when she knows you can be in a room around all kinds of things and she ain't got to worry about nothing because you ain't easily impressed. Baby, you can't get home fast enough. I'm trying to help you. You can't get home to her fast enough. She'll be FaceTiming you. Like, baby, I'm so proud of you. Hurry up, stop by the store, get this, and come on to the house. I can't wait to see you. I'm trying to help y'all. This is free game. She got to show up whole and complete, man. You have to, guys. You, Your power is, fellas, is in your ability to say no. Your power is in the ability to be whole and healed enough to say no. Thank you for the interest. Thank you for the flat. And listen, some of you women, some women are far, some of you women are more aggressive than men. I swear, I'm just being honest with you. Some of you women are more aggressive than men. So in today's day and time, man, it takes a lot of strength, especially if you got your stuff together. Because you got your stuff together, you got options. You got a lot of options. You got your stuff together, it takes a lot of strength to turn down opportunities to be hitting some every night. It takes strength, right, Marcus? I see Marcus is real aggressive. They are. It takes strength. But when you can display that strength, where you got all of this movement going on around you, but you can focus right where you are, listen to me. If you got one in your life and she knows that and you focus on her and she knows you locked, all you got to do is name what you want. That's it. Just name it and you can claim it. <laughs> Let me stop. I feel like I'm rambling now. All right. Um, I need 22 more shares. And then I want to answer some questions. I'm telling you, Belinda, Belinda just told you, you got it on lock. When she can see you got that kind of discipline and self-control, nothing is impossible for you. You can ask for whatever you want and she will make it happen. She's going to make it happen. Self-control. I like that, Brooklyn. Self-control is the real flex. That's for men and women. And that's my my goal for all of you. I want you to show up in these spaces. Y'all, we're only about 36 more viewers from 500. It'd be nice to be there. Y'all share this video. Come on, share it. My desire is really for you to be at that place where 
you are so whole and complete that you aren't easily impressed. It doesn't mean you're arrogant. I've been called arrogant. I get called arrogant a lot, believe it or not, from people primarily that don't know me, people that do know me, that are in my circle know. I'm incredibly easy to talk to. I wouldn't be in this field of work if I wasn't. I wouldn't have as many clients uh, and as growing of a business as I have if I was not, uh, if I was arrogant. Um, a lot of times you get that or you get bougie because people don't know you. You can live with that. But I'm telling you, when you show up whole and complete, people will label you those things if they don't know, if they can't identify with you or if who you represent is beyond what they're used to saying. And so your job is to show up as whole and complete as possible. Right. Mine is absolutely confident. Um, I've wavered in a lot of things in my life, but confidence ain't one of them. <laughs> Put me in a jungle. I'm going to survive. Um, and that's what you um, have to be positioned to do. All right. Um, let me mention again before I answer some questions, because a couple of questions are coming up wanting coaching. Uh, again, I am booked through June, most of July and even into August. But I do have group work. Uh, moderators, if you would drop in the comments really quickly. And I am looking for a few more moderators. I do need about three or four more moderators. And so if you're interested, just shoot me a DM. I'm going to try to get to all of those messages over the next couple of days. Um, but shoot me a DM if you're interested in moderating. And you need to be somebody that always tu tunes in on Thursdays. I can see actually your view history. So make sure you are one of those people. Um, but I would love some more moderators. And I would love some men moderators, in fact, as well. I want to mix it up. Um, but click on that link um, because group work. I've got the dates for group work. They are live right now. 12 slots, June the 10th. 12 slots, June 24th. That's it. Okay? That's it. 12 slots, June the 10th. 12 slots, June the 24th. It's like Alcoholics Anonymous, that type of format where you've got uh, all 13 of us together on the Zoom call and everybody gets an opportunity to talk about their problems and I discuss it and work it out with you while your peers are there and it's a powerful thing. Y'all are sleeping on group work. But if I've got any people on this call that have been on either of the last two, they will tell you it has been incredibly, insanely good. And so I do have group work available June the 10th, June the 24th. If you need to get to me in this month and can't wait to July or August, that's an alternative. If you want to just go ahead and sign up, you can hit the link as well um, for coaching. And um, you're going to see on my availability, you won't see much availability, if at all. Um, and what I can do, if you don't see anything, you can also send me an email. The email address will be on your receipt and I will work to try to identify the first available, but it will take some time to do that. And so, yes, the link is in my bio. Group work is two hours. So it's 12 of you. It's two hours. And I'm telling you, it is one of the most powerful things I've ever done in my career. The idea actually came to me when this TikTok stuff really started going crazy. And I was like, how in the world am I going to be able to help more people and then group work came, um, was an idea that dropped to me. And I'm telling you, it's one of the best things I've ever created. Um, you will love group work. Again, it's limited to 12 people, two hours, so it's not very long. And so that everybody has a chance to come on the screen and engage. And so I want to encourage you to do that if you're interested. The link is right there in the bio. All right. If you have any questions, go ahead and type it. Uh, I've got 1030. Let me take about the next 10 minutes and try to answer as many questions as I can. If you've got questions, just go ahead and start typing them in. Can a marriage last after someone has cheated? It's possible, but both people have to agree to that. Do you agree with single until married when dating? Technically, by terms of the law, you are technically on your taxes single, right, in that regard. But just because you are legally single doesn't mean you're not in a relationship, right? And I think that's where people mess that up. And so you can be in a relationship and acknowledge that. Um, yeah, you know when you are healed, when you start making better choices. That's right from one of my videos. I appreciate that. No problem. Thank you. Will you do a video on attention versus love? I can do that. Let me make a note of that really quickly um, here. Video on attention versus love. I'll do that. Uh, attention... versus love. I'll do that. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, Nina Nicole. I got you. Uh, let's see. How does one change 
on their ego. What's the difference between ego and pride? That's a very powerful question that we need a lot of time to discuss. But the ego is the thing that is designed, that's in our minds, in our spirits, that's designed to keep us connected to the past and worried about the future. That's what the ego's job is. The ego's job is to make you think about what's happened in the past behind you and to be concerned about what happens in the future. Um, pride gets in with that um, because pride is almost like ego's first cousin, in that they work hand in hand together to cause you to continuously remember things about the past and continuously worry about things in the future. This is what makes meditation powerful. When you learn to meditate, you learn to, to stop ruminating over the past and stop worrying about the future, Clarissa, and focus in the present. This is what makes meditation so powerful. Sitting with yourself 15 to 30 minutes a day to yourself and only thinking about what you're doing at that time, which is sitting there with your eyes closed to yourself, is the way you learn to slow the mind down and teach the ego not to worry about what happened yesterday and not worry about tomorrow. That's a powerful question. Uh, I am in North Carolina, but all of my sessions are virtual. Um, ooh. You know, you're welcome, Nina. Can you make a video on moving from an abusive marriage? I can absolutely do that. I've had a couple of clients that have had to do that. Um, moving on. I've got one client in mind I can use this for. Moving on from an abusive marriage. And let me just say again, uh, for those of you that don't know this by now, I still have people occasionally say, why are you talking about your clients? I don't talk about my clients. I always get permission to share these things. Signs that you, you found Signs that tell you you found a heal partner. It's those five things. How mental, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, and financially balanced are they? That's going to tell you everything you need. Um, should women wait to be approached or put themselves out there when ready to date? I think that's a powerful question. You know, the, the traditional part of me appreciates a woman who allows a man to approach her and pursue her. But I also realize that we are in modern times, and I think a whole woman that is interested in a whole man, there's nothing wrong with expressing that, right? I think there's a difference between expressing interest and being thirsty, right? I don't think there's wrong, nothing wrong with that. And let me just say this to you women. If you are whole and you are interested in a whole man, please know he might not do a whole lot to run after you. He may not. Your interest in him might come up before his interest in you comes up. And so if your interest in him comes up before his interest in you, or maybe your interest comes up at the same time for a whole man, he's going to expect you to duplicate the same amount of effort he's showing. If you're not duplicating his effort, he'll lose interest. I'm going to say this slow. Ladies, I get you want to be pursued, but if you're whole and he's whole, he's going to want you to duplicate some of his that interest. So he's not going to want the interest to be one sided where he's the only one showing you interest and you're showing him a little bit of interest. He's texting you. You text back. 10 hours later, like, or if at all, he, he's not going to be interested in that. So you got to make sure that you mirror the actions and the behaviors of a whole man and you'll get really far. And same thing, men for women. Great question there, vintage why. How do you know if your standards are too high? That's a really good question. That's a really good question. I don't know. I think the best way to evaluate our standards is to think about it against the, the five things that we talk about a lot. Uh, in terms of being um, whole um, and healed. But then also you need to make your list, right? Make your list of 25, 30 things that you want in another mate. Remember, 80% of those things at least should be things that are not superficial, right? Not, you know, cute, bald headed, beard, bow leg, nice shape, none of that stuff, guys and ladies. Well, not 80% of that stuff. 20% or less of your list should be that kind of stuff. The other stuff should be things of substance. So I think if you make, um, uh, to the Jamaican paralegal, I think if you make that list of 25, 30 things you want in a mate, at least 80 of those things are of substance, and you evaluate, first of all, you become those things, and you evaluate them against that list, also making sure that they check the, the five boxes, right, of, of being whole and healed, I think you can evaluate, just safely say that your standards are okay. All right. And so if your standards um, but don't meet that threshold um, in terms of 80, 20 on that list and those five things you should be evaluating against, you may have some challenges there. That's a tough question um, and certainly one that I probably need to spend more time there. Hey, good morning. 39 from Singapore. Do some guys. Thank you for, for tuning in from Singapore. Wow. Do some guys hesitate to talk about their feelings? Yes. Unhealed and unwhole guys, guys that are not whole 
struggle to talk about their feelings. I've discovered that the more healed you become, the more whole you become, the easier it is for you to open up because you're not afraid to be vulnerable because you're not afraid in your ability to recover. And the more healed you are, the more confident you are in your ability to recover. This is why I don't have a problem being vulnerable with people. If I'm interested, I don't have a problem with putting myself out there because I also have done enough work on me that if it doesn't work, I can recover. And heal people can recover. So, fellas, there's no excuse not to be communicative. Um, uh, la, 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 la. How do we make a list of ourselves to be the one or is this a thing? How do we make a list? I'm not sure I understand that question. How do you deal with a man that has an avoided attachment? Um, you definitely want to do some reading on attachment styles. Um, you're not going to an avoided attachment and an anxious attachment can have a dynamite relationship, very passionate, uh, but also can be very toxic. Um, and typically when you're dealing with avoidance, you have to give them space um, and avoidance really have to be healed in those areas that cause them um, to run away from love and cause them to run away from affection and, and attention and um, people attempting to get close to them. And so you want to be very careful with avoidance. Typically, when people fall in love with avoidance, they attempt to try to make them love them and you can't do it. That's the biggest trap you're going to set um, and you actually are going to push them away or you're going to make life harder for you in that relationship. What about grief? Losing a spouse is different than an ex-boyfriend. Do the same st rules still apply? I think that's a powerful question, Amber. I think we answer grief with gratitude, right? The answer to grief is gratitude. You've got to shift your focus, even if it's in losing a spouse. You've got to shift your focus from what you lost to being grateful for what you have. And uh, that's a process, my friend. It takes some time. And uh, if you're in that boat, I'm certainly praying for you, for real. I appreciate that question. Um, is it possible to start healing while still being in a relationship? That's very possible. Um, I don't know how wise it is. Um, if you're going to heal in a relationship, I'm not saying it's impossible. Let me be very clear here. I'm not saying it's impossible to heal while you're in a relationship. But if you are going to heal in a relationship, you need to be connected to a mate that can that can deal with the process of your healing. I literally had that conversation with the client today. Uh, if a, one of you are healing and the other person is is already there, the person that's already there has to have the patience and the stamina to deal with the process that the unhealed person is going through. And if not, that person is going to drive the other person, the healed person crazy, right? And the healed person might drive the unhealed person crazy because you're not yoked. You're not equally yoked, right? And so you can do it. It can happen, but it's going to require a lot of clear communication, a lot of clear understanding uh, for that to advance forward. Trying to stay for through all the men that try to talk to me. Uh, da, 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 da. Is it possible to start healing? Yeah, we talked about that. I mean, that right. How long is too long to wait for commitment? Great question, Passion King. Um, I don't have a set. There's not a set answer to this. I don't care what gurus or counselors or therapists or coach try to tell you. Uh, you know, give your mate two years. If they don't commit in two years, that's the wrong one because there's so many moving parts, right? A lot. <laughs> this is gonna be bad. But let me just say this. You know what? And I'm not saying this is you, Passion King, but in my experience, a lot of the people that have asked that question are people that aren't even healed themselves. Right. It's funny. One of the videos I did that went viral was talking about the red flag or something. And people was like the red flag was five years. Well, the problem with that assumption is that the gentleman that called me with the question was asking about a woman who needed to be healed. And he was the one that was waiting five years for her to get herself together. So for all of you that jumped to conclusions and said, oh, five years is a red flag, people do that not thinking about the fact that there are a lot of moving parts when you think about time and how long you should wait for commitment. And the biggest moving part is if you got two people that are not healed and whole, they might love each other, but they may not be healed and whole enough to be married. And if they're not, it's going to take time. How much time? I don't know. Depends on the couple and their development. Does that make sense? That's a really good question. Um, all right, y'all. I am out of time. Is it wrong to date younger when men? No, Betty Boo. It's not wrong to date younger men, and men is not wrong to date younger women either. Um, it's all about maturity, in my humble opinion. Thoughts on long-distance relationships forced to communicate more? Y'all, long-distance relationships do not work if you're not healed and whole. Two people that are not healed and whole in a long distance relationship, good luck. It's not going to work. Um, and that's for real. All right, y'all. I'm out of time. Um, this, As you can see, the questions are really coming through. 
Um, I promise you in maybe three to four weeks, we're going to transition some of these lives to YouTube. And I'm going to have a format using a third party, not a third party, and a, a third, yeah, a third party, yeah, third party um, site to allow some of you to come on the screen and you can ask your question. And we're going to start doing those maybe once a week where all I'm going to do is just answer questions, right? I won't do, so I'll use probably TikTok to do a lesson. I'll use YouTube to just answer questions. It'll be the live and you can come on screen and you can answer those questions and it's going to be amazing. And I think you all are going to enjoy that. And I'm hoping to launch that in the next three to four weeks. Okay. Uh, you want the story behind my hat really quickly. I shared this um, with um, the group work. Don't forget group work is up now. Register for group work. It's up right now. I only have 12 slots, June the 10th. I have 12 slots, June the 24th. When they're gone, they are gone. All right. So register for group work. Um, a lady at, at our church had made these, um, an older lady had made these for homeless people and um, people in nursing homes. Uh, she did it around the holiday season and she did it as a part of a giveaway we were doing. We were giving away food and clothes and she made these, handmade these for homeless people that would be out in the wintertime that would be cold. And she had some extra ones and I begged her. Well, I didn't have to beg her. I asked her if I could have a few and she did. And and so I always wear this hat. You see it in the videos, not just trying to be cool. I like my hats. I'm cold natured, but I also wear them because it reminds me of my purpose. Right? She did that in her spare time. But one of her things that really drove her was her desire and her purpose to serve others. And so when I wear this hat, it always reminds me of my purpose. And so you might see me in this in my videos wearing it and it's hot outside. It's really comfortable in the wintertime. But that's what the whole story behind the hat is. OK, listen, I love y'all. I appreciate all of you. And um, I hope you enjoy your weekend. Uh, again, don't forget to sign up for, for group work. I want to see you. I only found you before I was pregnant by a gaslighting cheater calling himself a high value man. That's OK, Ray. You're going to recover. And um, stick with this channel. We're going to we're going to walk you through everything that you need. OK, um, but I love all of you. I appreciate you. I'm, I'm rooting for you. I'm praying for you. I want you to have a fantastic night. Yes, I'm going to get some rest. I'm going to try to enjoy my weekend um, away. And uh, but I appreciate all of you and everything that you do. Sign up for group work right away. And um, we'll see you. We'll have a video tomorrow and um, and we'll have some announce uh, some exciting things to announce here in the weeks to come. OK, love you. Praying for you. Peace and blessings. Have a good one. Thank y'all. Fill it up with the hearts and share. Thank you. I'm trying to wait for y'all to just fall off. See you. Bye. I'm tired. The Nuggets just won the game. Good night. No contacts. Cool. I see you, Shay Shay. You're trying to make me start answering questions again. Good night. See y'all. <laughs>